Today I'm going to be sharing some tips and crafting hacks to help you craft better and I'm also going to show you how you can create these three beautiful flamingo themed DIYs that are going to go perfect on a tiered tray. But instead of just talking about it, let's be about it and let's get crafting. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. All right, we're kicking it off with the Talent to Creators Collaboration playlist. I'm going to have a link to that below, but thank you so much to the host DIY with Aria, Lowly D's Creation, and the guest host is Craft Away with May, and the co-host is Z9 Designs. I'll have a link to their channels as well as the playlist in the description box below. Please check it out. The star of today's show is this pink melon color paint from Folk Art, and I'm going to kick off with a little crafting hack. If you're trying to paint like little beads or in my case craft sticks or popsicle sticks an easy way to keep them in place while you're painting is to put a piece of masking tape sticky side up and then put a little piece of tape on each end to kind of secure it down and then you just place your craft sticks or your beads or whatever you're painting right on top and it holds them in place we're going to take that really pretty pink melon color and we're just going to start painting i'm painting four um, sticks with the pink melon and four with folk art um, paint in the color snow white i also paint some or do the waverly wax in the color antique on some but don't mind this we're going to paint them black at the end <laughs> and then i have this little cube that i got from dollar tree and i'm painting two si no one side the top the top of it with the pink melon color I'm taking some Mod Podge. Did you know it was May is Mod Podge month? It is. It's also my birthday month. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just applying some Mod Podge to two sides of this little cube with my fingers. And then I'm taking those crab sticks that are now dry and I'm going to cut them down to size. And so I'm just kind of measuring out and I'm not throwing away the little extras that I have left over because I'm going to use them for the other side. And you'll see what I do in just a second. But this side, I'm just kind of lining them up, seeing how they all need to fit. I'm going to take some wood glue that I got from the Dollar Tree. And wood glue works best wood to wood. So I have the back side of those popsicle sticks unpainted. So it's going to adhere really nicely. And I'm just alternating the pink melon and the snow white, pink melon and snow white on one side of that little cube. For this part, I'm trying to decide what pattern I want to do on the other side. And at first I thought I was going to do a brick pattern, kind of seeing how that's going to work. And then I was trying to cut things down to size because the black popsicle sticks hadn't cut down yet. Anyway, decided to do it this way. And so I just used that wood glue again to glue them all on. I got this napkin from the Dollar Tree and y'all, it took me forever and a day to pull it apart. I finally got it apart, but... Whenever you're using Mod Podge, you're going to decoupage something on. You only want one ply of the napkin or tissue paper or whatever. So now I'm placing it on the cube where I want it. So the design is where I want it. And I'm placing a piece of parchment paper because that is going to reactivate the Mod Podge. This is a simple and easy way for you to do it without it... Um, being messy and it doesn't wrinkle or anything like that it's a really great technique it's a really good hack for getting wrinkle free Mod Podge and once that is reactivated and attached I'm just using my little finger sander to sand off the excess and this is how it turned out I love it I think it's so cute so I have one side like this and I have the other side like that and I just think it's going to look really cute on a tear tray from any angle that you see it. So two sides have the, the napkin and the other two sides are the craft sticks in just different patterns. Got this little crate from the Dollar Tree and I'm using that pink melon color again. And I'm just going to be painting the, the sides that you see there. That side and then the other side, the opposite side. I'm not doing the ends of the crate. I am going to put some Mod Podge on the end though. And I'm going to let that dry thoroughly because, again, we're going to decoupage on the end there. I'm going to use that mat napkin again to kind of keep with my little theme. But um, I'm going to put Mod Podge there. And I'm also going to put Mod Podge on the top of the box as well. Once it's all dry, um, you apply the napkin in the area that you want it 
with the pattern the way you want it, you put a piece of parchment paper, that's key too, the parchment paper. So to protect your little heat press or your little iron, whatever you're using, just in case any Mod Podge seeps out or something like that, it's not gonna damage your little um, heat press. And then I just, again, cut away the excess and then you'll use the finger sander to trim away it really gives it a nice clean edge without having to like measure too closely or anything like that it's another great tip for crafting and i'm also going to do the same technique to each end i cannot stress enough how easy this makes it to decoupage something now if you have something with a lot of nooks and crannies and things like that sure that's going to be a little bit different story but this really you don't have any wrinkles and it's just so easy to work with I did cut out some letters using my Cricut, but if you don't have a Cricut, you could either hand letter it on, or you could use the little mini stickers that they have at the Dollar Tree or at other places. <laughs> I mean, Walmart probably has little stickers that you could use as well. I applied them on using my paper transfer tape that I love so much because it does not pull up paint or anything like that. Sometimes you have to be really careful with the transfer tape if it's like super sticky. But I'm just adding the words where I want them, and I pull back the transfer tape, and I add the next words, and so on and so forth. I didn't show it, but I added a little black with white polka dot ribbon to the end, and that's how it turned out. I just think it is so adorable, and I just think it looks so pretty. I'm using this Frosted Flakes cereal box, and I just want you all to know, if you don't have a specific wood shape or something like that, you can create stuff using cereal boxes and cardboard that look really awesome in the end. And you wouldn't really know it's going to be, you're not going to know it's a cereal box at the end, y'all. So what I did was I saw a, I saw this at Hobby Lobby actually, and I just took a picture of it. I printed it out and I just used that as a template. I just sized it to the size I needed. And I think I'm going to end up cutting out like five or six of these. That, oh hi Neo <laughs> the thickness is going to depend on you and how thick that you want it but I think I, I want to say I did like five or six of them and then I just used some Elmer's glue and then I'm gluing them all together now you could also use wood glue um, because this is you know fiber from um, a tree but I am just using that wood glue and it works fine once I got to the end, I did use those little pink clamps that I got from Dollar Tree to kind of hold it together while it dried. Because I didn't, <laughs> when I traced out the cardboard, I didn't, it's not exactly perfect with one another. And so I am just trimming off the excess and it is a little harder to trim it because it's like I said, five or six flamingo shapes thick, but it's it's easy enough to do it where it's not like a super struggle or anything like that i use that flamingo color and i painted it i guess i didn't show you that part but now we're onto the beak and i'm using this like i guess kind of a melon color i'm gonna peach color and i'm using that for the beak then i take some black paint and i'm using the end of the paintbrush to make a dot for the flamingo's eyes and then once that's done I'll just use the paintbrush to paint on the little tip of his beak or her beak. I don't know. Could be a girl, could be a boy. Aren't bo like male birds like darker or brighter looking? So maybe it is a male. Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> For the bottom of the birdhouse, um, did I not show you me painting the birdhouse? I guess not. I painted the birdhouse, y'all. And so I got the birdhouse from Dollar Tree and I just painted it with the pink melon color again. And I'm using the black paint to just paint the base of this birdhouse. Now I'm just gonna trim this up a little bit because I want it to fit up in the little eave of the house, that little point of the house there. So I'm just trying to cut it so that it fits and doesn't hang over the opening or anything like that. Then I take some wood glue, and again, I got that from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue, but I'm just trying to make sure it's all up in that, the eave of the house, so that way, is that the eave? Yeah, I don't know, the point, <laughs> the point right there, and then I'm going to add some wood glue to the ends of the flamingo, and I'm going to put a little dot of hot glue in between, and then I'm just going to hold it down, and then just wait for it to set. 
And then I took some more craft sticks and I think I have seven of each and I'm painting half of them with the snow white color and the other half with the pink melon color. And I decided, I thought that the birdhouse looked a little bit too plain. So that's why I'm going to add this little, um, <laughs> I guess it's like roof decor. I mean, I'm not exactly sure. I'm making a different roof out of these craft sticks and I'm just cutting them all down to size. And I do save the sticks, although I'm not sure what I'm going to use them for, but you never know. So now they're all cut out and I'm lining them up and I'm using, again, the wood glue and I'm going to use a dab of hot glue in the center. You don't want to mix glues because that could affect how they work or don't work. So just be sure and don't mix the glues, but I'm only putting the dab of hot glue down right as I'm about to place the little craft stick down because I don't want the crap, the hot glue to get cold and not stick. And so see, it's making a super cute. I, do, I love how this is turning out. Tell me this ain't cute. This is super cute. I think it's adorable. I love it. I really, really love how it turned out. And I think it's going to look so good on my tear tray. Now I'm doing two parts. This is part one where I, I'm showing you some, and I've got another video coming out in another week and a half. I think that'll be part two. And I'll show you how I style my flamingo themed tear tray. I appreciate y'all so much for joining me today in my craft space. I really do appreciate the company <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed the things that I made today. I'm going to leave up a couple of videos that I think you might enjoy. They'll be over on the left there. And if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, my handle is our gray house, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.